Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your reading. Uh, sorry, let me just start this. Um, <laughs> so I need to make sure that I'm recording here, Virgo, but welcome to your reading for the week of April 18th. Uh, we are just going to jump right in here and see what is going on for you uh, at this time. And uh, this whole entire deck is upside down, just so you know. But uh, this is Mega Deck. This is a combination between uh, the Tarot of the Wild Unknown and Tarot of the Wild Unknown Animal Oracle. So uh, some of you might remember back in the day that I used to use uh, Mega Deck all the time. So uh, there you go. But uh, let's see here. This is a good week for you. Damn. Virgo, look at this. Chariot, Ten of Cups, Lovers, um, Star, Four of Wands. Are you kidding? Very good week. So a lot of good stuff coming up for you. Uh, of course, I had to ruin it with the uh, Seven of Swords there at the end. But we'll look into it. We're going to clarify. This is part one. There will be a part two in the description down below. And I always say, one one card does not make the reading. And uh, you have two sevens here as well. Two sevens is internal fears don't exist. Definitely popping into my head. This reading is good. It's like whenever I get a good reading and then a card like that pops up, to me, it's kind of like saying, you know, it could be limiting beliefs or, or something like that. You have this look below the surface card. It says, avoid becoming distracted by surface issues. This has come up for everybody. Um, focus on underlying motivation, cause, or beauty in a situation. Seek ways to bring depth to the world. And... Um, Again, the whole focus thing has been coming up quite a bit. This says avoid distractions, you know? And uh, a lot of people have been getting these cards of needing to really be careful of avoiding uh, distractions that could be going on in the world or that could be going on around you in general. So it could be any type of distraction, but I would just be careful. I would say that, you know, I would be careful. I've been telling people for, you know, a long ass time to be careful of anything where people are saying the sky is falling. Let's put it that way, right? Um, because of Neptune and Pisces. Neptune and Pisces is uh, pure deception. <laughs> so uh, I've been saying this for like two years, uh, at least probably a lot longer than that, um, that, you know, it's pure deception. Nothing we see is probably the truth, right? And uh, again, people, someone always comes at me and says, you know, something about the government or something. I'm, I don't support the government. I'm not, I'm not political at all. So this is not a political statement. Um, but what I would say is I would just be careful of getting swept up in things uh, emotionally with that energy. You have the lovers, the four wands and the star. Damn. That is really good. Um, everybody, it's kind of weird. This week has been very love heavy. Um, it's kind of interesting because I, I just do whatever comes up readings. You know, I don't try to force my readings to be love or business. I just do, I just read the cards, whatever comes up, you know, and, and whatever I feel intuitively seems to me like the love energy could be opening up at this time. So, you know, just so I have noticed through the years of reading, sometimes there are times where it just seems like you know, the energy for people to fall in love or to get into a relationship kind of opens up, if that makes sense. Definitely seems to be one of those weeks because, like I said, all the readings I've done so far have been really good as far as love is concerned. And yours is actually the best one. Uh, Four Wands, Ten of Cups, Chariot, really good cards for love. So if you're looking for love, um, this could definitely be really good for you. What I would say here is what I want to show you is this right here. Going Seven of Cups to Seven of Swords. Again, to me, two sevens is internal fears that don't exist. So, you know, there could be some fears that are happening around you in your life. And, and these fears could be kind of preventing you from moving forward. So sometimes I feel like the two sevens kind of, uh, they're not really so much talking about the meanings of the sevens, although we're gonna cover them, of course, but you know, to me it can represent some fears getting in the way of you becoming successful. And I would say if you have had things get in the way of a goal, wish, or dream, in the past, which I feel like has come up for you quite a bit over the past few readings, right? That there could be something that you've been trying to accomplish for about four or five years, somewhere around there is what I get intuitively. Uh, then, you know, what I would say here is that letting go of the fears, taking control of the fears is probably the thing that you need to do. Even if we go this way, star, seven of cups to the chariot, it's like the chariot is about asserting your will. It's about like really taking control of the things that are happening in your life uh, so that you can make something happen. And that's what I feel like you need to do here. Um, I definitely see this as a process, the star. I feel like, again, that some of you have been trying to do something for a very long time, and this is something you've been wishing for for a while. It's kind of interesting, because I think in one of your past readings, I said this, it's like, I see this, you know, these are the eight stars, and there are seven stars here as well. They represent like the seven stars of the Pleiades, and what I would say here is that these seven stars, I kind of see these as like chances that you have taken towards something, whether it's love or business or money or whatever, and um, I feel like you're about to have a celebration. 
because of all the, it's like you're taking one last chance. And I feel like this is gonna lead to a celebration, happiness, success, you know, being set free. The four of wands, a card of freedom or being set free. So, and you know, I feel like there's a lot of freedom. It's also a card of marriage. So, you know, again, if you're looking for love, this looks like a very good love reading for you in general. Uh, you have the two of cups next. Two of cups is a perfect match. So I do feel like there could be a perfect match coming in for you if you are looking for love. Uh, it could be a water sign. Uh, you have a lot of water here. Uh, could be any sign. It's a general reading. I always tell people don't get all caught up on the sign, right? Um, and what I would say here is that it could just be a perfect match. If you're not looking for love, even if you are, the two cups to me is like you and your higher self. It can be you, you know, kind of communicating with your higher self. It could be through dreams, daydreams, um, you know, kind of any way that you could, it could be through seeing repeating numbers. So I would be paying attention to that stuff this week with the two of cups because your higher self could be communicating with you with this energy. Uh, you have the 10 of cups, the seven of cups, and the king of cups, I do feel this could be a person that's coming in for you. And again, it doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to. I don't attach gender to my cards in these general readings. So it could just be a person who embraces the king of cups energy, someone who's very bold, um, someone who really has great control over their emotions. The king of cups is also a very deep uh, type of person, like emotionally, they're very deep. I always say the King of Cups sometimes can come off as almost having no emotions, but that's not true. They actually have very deep emotions. They just have so much control over their emotions that it looks like they don't have emotions. So even though they do, they just know how to express them on a very deep level. So I do feel there could be a person like that coming in for you. You have these Seven of Cups. It's kind of interesting how this Seven of Cups is popping into my head for you, Virgo. I kind of feel like for a lot of you, it's like, you know, I think no matter what, you always come back to one thing here with the star card and the seven of cups. It, it's kind of weird because I, I, like, I feel like there's always something that you have come back to, you know, whether it's in work, in business, your passions or things that you want to do. I, I feel like there's something that almost always calls out to you. And it almost looks like to me, like you're getting an opportunity to do whatever that is. So if you're, maybe there's a job or a business or whatever, that you really want to do, I feel like you're going, it's like you're finally getting to do it. <laughs> or it could also be like a goal, a wish, a dream. Uh, you have the 10 of cups, which is fortune after difficulty. So a lot of happiness coming in for you here, Virgo. If you're looking for love, uh, this could be you finding a person who like wants a happy home, happy family type of situation here with the 10 of cups. So I really like that. If you don't want love, again, to me, this represents fortune after difficulty. And again, it looks like you could be revisiting a dream that you've had for a long time, something you've tried multiple times with the star card. And now I feel they're the happily ever after with the 10 of cups or the fortune after difficulty could be because you're manifesting the dream. Uh, next, you have the horseshoe. It says, good luck. I love it. And you have the rose. It says, romance is in the air, clearly. So there you go. Could be very good luck coming in for you in general, but also good luck in love coming in for you here with these cards. Uh, in this row, you have the chariot, the page of cups, and the seven of swords. Seven of swords can be lying, cheating, stealing. However, as I always say, it's not always true. The card is a golden card and golden cards in the tarot are meant to be positive. He is stealing these swords from the army in the background. That's the true meaning of the card is that he's going to war, but in a different way. He's, yeah, he's being a trickster. I, that's where the lying, cheating, stealing comes from. He's being a trickster, but really he's doing he's going to war in a different way he's doing things he's not you know going into conflict head on he's finding another way to do things so it's really a card of tactics and doing things differently than you have done in the past so it can say that in love for example it's time to do things differently so that you can be more successful this time you have the page of cups clearly there is an admirer around you or someone who is interested in you. It could be, it could also be you who is interested in a person. It could be a water sign that's interested in you. The Page of Cups, like a very dreamy energy in your reading, by the way, Seven of Cups, Ten of Cups, Page of Cups. You know, Page of Cups, he is imagining that fish that is in the cup. The, the Page of Cups is a card of your imagination. And you also have the star, like a wish. You know, making a wish, wishing on a star. So I feel there is like a very imaginative energy here. And if I was being super, super critical about this reading, what I would say is I feel like, you know, bringing things down to earth, grounding your dreams is going to be very important for you this week with this energy. Looks like you could be very successful, but it's like you need to take control with the chariot. 
The chariot is as above, so below. There are stars up here. There's moons on his shoulders. It literally represents as above, so below. If you can dream it, you can have it with the chariot. But the thing with the chariot is you have to take control of these two sphinxes that are in front of him. There are no reins attaching the sphinxes to the chariot on the card. It kind of represents the fact that, number one, the universe is in control. He understands that. But he does also understand that he has to ultimately be the one to take control of his destiny. He also understands that he has to work within certain boundaries, certain limits. It's like the chariot can only drive on the road. So it's like he, he kind of, he, he's able to make choices. He's able to make decisions, but he kind of has to work within certain limits. And I, I do get that feeling for you here, Virgo, where it's like, it's like you have free will, of course, you can do whatever you want, but I feel like there are kind of like certain rules and regulations that you're having to follow at this time. Both sphinxes are facing in two different directions. They're facing kind of different directions, and it represents the fact that he has a choice <laughs> on the direction that he takes his life. So I feel like you need to pick the positive direction. He's also kind of like holding the wand that the magician is holding, and uh, he kind of looks like the magician as well. So it can kind of represent a new beginning coming in for you. And there have been a lot of new beginning readings uh, uh, showing up this week. He also has a star right on his uh, crown there. So there's like a major focus on the star in your reading. I feel like this is, you know, I feel like everything kind of goes back to the star, which is, you know, some sort of dream that you have. It could be what you picture your happily ever after being, right? And I also feel like you're kind of seeing that something is possible. She's pouring water onto the land here from the pool of universal consciousness. And it represents the fact that if something is possible for one person, it's possible for you. So it's like something is becoming possible for you here, Virgo, uh, this week, maybe, <laughs> clearly. And I feel like it's going to be very good for you. Also, this is just an amazing uh, love week for you in general, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, love it. Thank you for being here. Uh, part two is linked up in the description down below.